Welcome to a solitaire playthrough of a very interesting and unique game from Hollenspiel. The game is Endurance, a solitaire game of Antarctic survival designed by Amabel Holland. So this game takes a look at the what is called the Shackleton Expedition. Here, let me uh, open the rule book. Extremely stark graphics and colors, by the way, that I think sets the tone of the game perfectly. Um, in 1914, the Endurance, which is a the name of a ship that you're on, carried 28 men toward Antarctica. Led by Ernest Shackleton, they intended to be the first to cross the unforgiving continent overland. So this game is a look at that expedition. And interestingly enough, that expedition against all odds, right, from weather and temperature to lack of food, uh, poor luck, having to do things like eat animals, etc., uh, and starve and go hungry, they survived. So they, once again, against odds, they survived this expedition. Not a man died or was lost. And I think Amabel in her notes talks a lot about this is a miracle, absolutely a phenomenal accomplishment, probably a testament to Ernest Shackleton and his leadership, uh, as well as his second in command and the men's fortitude. Um, they just were able to make it through to survive. So this game, and I hate to call it a game because it, it is a very dreary difficult, gut-wrenching, heartbreaking simulation of what, uh, how they survived from finding food, getting heat, keeping their morale up, staving off infection and illness, all of those things in order to try to make it back home. So it's not a game. You're not going to play this because, oh, this is the greatest experience in the world. I, I'm going to be honest, guys. I've played this three or four times, and it's it's gut-wrenching. It really is because you have terribly difficult choices. You're faced with impossible decisions. You're going to do things that are called um, actions and tests, and when you fail those, you're going to have consequences. Those consequences are going to be your men, your crew members, are going to be turned from their blue side, which is good morale, to their red side, which is poor morale. If you ever have all of your crew members over on their red side, you immediately lose the game. That has happened to me once. I think this is this will be my fourth play of the game. I've not done that well. I think my dice hate me. These white dice here that came with the game, you'll see them. I think they hate me. Um, but it's it's an effort to try to keep them on their blue side, get supplies through various actions, doing your sled dogs out to the endurance, which is trapped, hunting the local penguins, cooking food, staying warm using blubber, uh, and then also using the limited options you have for entertainment to try to keep the crew uh, with good morale. You have a phonograph, uh, there's a deck of playing cards on the boat, you don't have access to it, and then there's a book on the boat as well. Um, so yeah, and, and the deck stacked against you. Here you have your starting deck, and you'll notice I have these uh, little paper titles here because I, I, I'm obtuse and found it very difficult to follow the setup instructions and keep in my mind what decks were what and what cards went where. So as you can see, I've got four of these. You've got a reserve deck. Those are challenges or cards that haven't come into your deck yet. This is a discard. These are cards that start discarded. There's also a couple of events in there that are going to be bad for you. You've got a deck, and I think, didn't I just count these? And I think it's like 12 cards to start, plus the two you drew. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. So it's a total of 12 cards, plus the two that you initially draw as your initial hand. Um, and there's bad stuff in there. There are these tests and actions, and if you fail them, you have to either 
demoralize or exhaust these guys, or if they're already exhausted, they're going to be sent to the infirmary uh, where they potentially can die if their number comes up again. Then you've got this deck of event cards over here to the left. And then finally, up on the upper right, you've got some events, red colored events, and the hard choice that are going to come in when you, you meet certain points. And I'll probably mess those up because I feel like I have every game. Uh, and your goal is to survive, to get to the very end where all the events and all the cards have been gone through and you still have dudes that are on their blue side. That's going to be really hard. And I'll show you why we're going to go through this. This is going to be a playthrough. I am not sure that I'll get an entire playthrough in because this can be a very long game. It also can be very short. And you'll see if the dice go against me, I'm going to have to exhaust guys left and right. I'm going to exhaust my supplies. I'm going to lose those and not be able to do anything that I need to do. And therefore, more and more guys are going to be uh, exhausted. So without further ado, I'm just going to start playing and we're going to go through it and uh, I'll kind of discuss things as we come to them. I do want to point out one thing that I'm going to make mistakes. So please, if you played the game, point those mistakes out in the comments. Uh, I want to make sure people learn how to play the game and understand it. I'm not sure this game is overly complex. There's just a lot of steps. You have to do a lot of things continuously. It does have a good play aid that's on the back of the rule book. Just kind of gives you the different tests on the right and the actions on the left and what you're going to do. Where I miss more often than not is every time an event card is pulled, you do the event and then you're supposed to draw another event and throw it into the discard. Sometimes I forget that. That's the only way to have the game go forward. So you need to make sure that you continually do that right. The other thing that can happen is if you fail an action or a test, you can exhaust certain guys, named guys, that will turn some of your failures into success, potentially making it so you succeed. Now, you might ask, well, why would you do that? You're exhausting a guy, and if you fail a test, you're going to exhaust a guy. Well, if you fail a, a, an action, which is listed first, the first thing is an action, the second is a test. If you fail, you're going to have to exhaust the two guys that are listed and shown. So if I can, if I fail an action and I can turn a guy over and exhaust him and save myself from exhausting another guy, that makes mathematical sense, right? You're, you're trading one for two. Now you need to understand that the next time you fail that similar test, that guy can't help you unless you've got him turned back over. So there are certain actions. We'll go through those as we go uh, look at the cards. We're going to roll a lot of dice. I do like the dice mechanic in this one. It's kind of light and fun and keeps the game interesting. There, I use that word fun, and I should not be using that word fun uh, with this game because it's not really that kind of game, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, you also, I, I had Mr. Uh, Chippy. Miss Chippy turned over, and, and that was that was bad. Uh, you, you also, for certain tests, if you have certain guys in that group, and there are five groups, I'm sorry, yeah, five groups, one, two, three, four, five. You can see them up here, the, the active group. If you have a guy in that group that meets that test's requirement for an auto-success, you just auto-succeed. That guy's good at that. If he's exhaust, not exhausted, you can just succeed. That doesn't happen a lot, because I'm telling you, you start with... You can see you started with the first two groups, one guy turned over. The second two groups, two of those guys were turned over. And the third group, three guys had to be exhausted. You'll also notice each of these guys has a die symbol on their, on their uh, counter. That's their skill level. When you're trying to do an action for this group, you take the lowest skill level or the skill level from the item that you're using, like the rifle, the phonograph, and you have to roll higher than that number, right? So to get successes, let me show you in the rule book. It's very, very clear. Um, so for all actions, the target number you want to roll equal to or greater than is the best lowest skill level in the group. So it's equal to or greater than, but a one is always a failure. So when you roll ones, 
you're going to have to subtract those ones from your numbers of successes. That gets really brutal, especially if you end up rolling two or three ones, it can just devastate you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. We'll see how far we get. I think we'll at least get through this first phase. We may end up seeing the endurance sink. We may end up having to go onto the lifeboats. But after that, it gets harder and harder. And, and this game can take an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how fast you play it. So I'm not sure that we're going to get through everything, but I will give it my best. And we'll try to have uh, an interesting time with this game. All right, so the first group, and I have these two cards. This first group, Shackleton is on there. He has a very good uh, skill level of four. You also have McLeod, who has a four. And uh, that group's going to have a better time of it doing some of these things. Now, they do have other things, so it's going to help them. But let's look at the two cards that are drawn. And what happens is I've got to, of these two cards, I've got to do one of these. When I do that card, I discard it. Then I have to do one of these. These are called actions. This is called a test. If I fail, I have to, I have to then exhaust the guys that are listed. So w looking at that, I don't want to do this one because I don't want to have to exhaust. A red penguin icon means you have to exhaust. This just means, uh, but I might, I actually want to do that because having two meat and having to cook two meat is going to be very challenging. The other thing you have to remember is when you have a, a food test and you have dogs that are alive, you have to cook another piece of meat for them. You don't have to cook it. I'm sorry, you have to use it. When you use them, you're going to have to test for exhaustion and you're going to start losing your supplies. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and do, we're going to do the action. We're going to do a hunt action on this one. All right, so with that, let's go to the handy dandy back of the book and just show you how a hunt icon works. Number of icons, success is needed. So I have one penguin. Now I have to, I have to uh, exhaust a guy. I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust Hal. Because McNish is, now isn't McNish one of the important ones? Maybe he's not. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exa exhaust McNish. Now nah, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna do Hal. At this point, it, it doesn't matter as much. But there are dog handlers that you want to have in good shape so that when you do the sled action, you can ultimately, ultimately win at it. So I am going to use my rifle. You'll notice the rifle's skill level is a three. So I have to roll threes or hires or higher. Now, remember, the highest skill in my group was a four. So using the rifle uh, supersedes that. All right, so I'm going to roll a die when I use the rifle, two for the shotgun, and then I'm gonna roll one die for each of my men who have a die symbol on them. So including Shackleton, I'm gonna roll two, four, six, plus one for the rifle. I can always flip wild to convert one failure to a success, two if wild is in the active group. He is not but he is over here and I could flip him to convert a success. The reward you get is you get a meat per icon. So I can end up getting one meat and I get one blubber total, no matter what. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and do this. We have the seven dice and I'm trying to figure out how best to do this. L let's go ahead and just do this. Uh, and that's a brutal roll. No, actually it's a good roll. That's a very good roll. So if you can't see, I rolled five successes versus just two, uh, two ones, which are failures. So I just take two of those. I have three successes. Three is greater than one. I succeed. So I can take from these areas a meat. Now I have to flip it over. That's one meat. And I put it there and meat is used for me to feed my guys. I also can get a blubber. Blubber is used to cook meat but blubber is also used to uh, do a heat test. So you need to have a lot of those, particularly if you hope to survive. Um, so yeah, there we go. I succeeded, so I, I wasn't required to exhaust 18 and 14. And you'll notice 18, and, 18 was in the group, 14 is not. They are, let's see where they are, right here. I would have had to, to uh, 
Exhaust Clark. Clark's a name that we're familiar with in Antarctic horror movies from The Thing, but no relation or no connection. All right, that was the action. Now we need to do a test. So we're going to test a canned good. We have a double canned good icon, which just means we have two icons. So we're going to go over there, and that is called a food test right here. Must meet number of pictured resources. Must cook any meat for human consumption with blubber. Expend one extra meat or pemmican. Pemmican are these gross things. If you have any animals, which I do, but I'm not cooking meat, may substitute as follows. So you can substitute. If green is in the group, you can auto succeed. I don't have green in the group. Where the heck is green? Oh, green is exhausted over here, but you know, that that's part of it. All right. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot. I have to exhaust or check for exhaustion my rifle. I almost see. I told you I was going to make mistakes. And you're probably sitting there screaming, hey, you got to do this. So it's a four. And let me let me just look one more time because I've played. It's been a couple of uh, about a week since I've last played the game. So you have to chest check for exhaustion. I'm just checking if it's I thought it was under. I think I have to roll under. Uh, under the uh, the number there, where the heck is exhaustion for exhaustion? Well, let's let's try to find this, guys. I apologize. I'm not an idiot. Ah, here we go. Check for exhaustion by rolling a single die. If the result is greater than the red die number on the counter, the resource is exhausted. If already flipped, remember each so it has to be greater than. So as long as I roll four or lower, I'm going to succeed. So here we go. All right, I rolled a one. We don't have to exhaust our rifle. Thank heavens. If you exhaust it, you flip it over, and then it becomes a little harder. All right, so food. We're just going to find this food. We pass, right? All we got to do is show that we have those items in our inventory. So that's one that was easy. I passed, but we got to check this food for exhaustion. You'll notice it's a two a red two, so I got to roll a one or a two. So a three, I failed. This item is going to exhaust. Now you can, if I remember correctly, there's one of the guys that you can remember each turn. Nope, nope. Where is that? Eh. Well, there is one guy, but I can't remember which guy it is. I'm not ready to uh, exhaust him yet to stop that. I think it's Les Ordres, I think. Yeah, when you fail an exhaustion check, you can flip Ordre, Ordre Lees, number 17, from blue to red to prevent the resource. He is, where was he? Doggone it. Right here. He's exhausted, so I can't even do that. All right, so I, I, failed, I failed with the exhaustion check. And now you'll notice it's a three or lower, so it's like a 50-50. All right, we succeeded. So we move from the active group, move it over to the group number two, and we're going to draw two cards from the draw deck. Hopefully there's no events yet. Okay, no events yet. All right, so. Ah, crap. So I don't have two canned goods, so I can't do that one. So I've got to go hunting again, and then i got to cook uh, meat. I really want to do... This one, unfortunately, that, that's not going to happen. So let's go hunting again with this group. Going to use the rifle. I've got one, two, all six, and my skill level is three. So two, four, six dice with one for the rifle, and I need three overall successes. All right, pretty good. So we rolled the dice. We got five successes, two failures, so that takes away two. We have three, that's enough. I get, oh, I had to, I'm sorry, I had to, let's do Kerr. I was supposed to exhaust because that has a red icon. Those are going to end up killing me faster than some of the other stuff, and I found that those come up way more often for me. But I have three successes, so I pass. Now remember... I'm going to get a, a meat for each of the icons. So here's a meat that I'm going to flip over. So it now is a double meat. This stands for one, and then flipping it over is another two. So I've got 
three meat and you always get one blubber. So I'm going to turn that blubber over and we succeed at that. All right. So that card gets discarded and we're going to test for the rifle. All right. I rolled a five. So the rifle is going to be exhausted. See, it, it's, it's already happening. So next on the card is the meat. We're going to have to cook meat and we're going to have to have two meats, which we do. And we're going to have to test both of those for exhaustion because I've had, I have dogs. So let's go ahead and go to a food test, right? So I cook the food for myself. I've got the, the blubber. Remember for test, you typically don't roll. You literally just have to show that you have those icons in your camp. All right. So we succeed. We pass the test, but now we've got to exhaust the blubber and the meat. So let's do the meat first. The meat is a three. All right. I rolled a three. That meat does not exhaust. Excellent. This blubber, it's a two. I rolled a six. So the blubber is going to go ahead and exhaust. And remember, I had to have a meat for the dogs. We're going to have to roll for that meat as well. I rolled a five and it exhausts. And I'm not as concerned about meat and blubber exhausting because, because I can always go hunting. All right, but I succeeded. We don't have to do any damage to ourselves. Let's draw the next two cards for the next group. I want to show you. Oh, we got a we got an event. Crap. Freaking hate events. All right, so this says surgery. The highest numbered man in the current group requires surgery. Roll a die each for Macklin and McElroy if both are fresh. Otherwise, roll one die only. If the total is six plus, place the patient in the infir infirmary. If less than six, the, patient's die the patient dies. All right, so we have to roll for Macklin and McElroy. Oh, highest numbered in the current group. Highest numbered man. And I was, I can't remember if the highest is the, you know, I think I made a mistake in the setup. Dang it. I think highest refers to, so number three, we're testing for Green Street. And uh, let's see if Macklin and McElroy are f both fresh. Probably not, if I, if I had to guess. So Macklin and Mac McElroy is fresh. Where the heck is Macklin? So I'm not, there's, Ma okay, Macklin and McElroy are both fresh. So we get to roll two dice and it has to be six plus. If the total six plus, place that patient in the infirmary. If less, the patient dies. All right, so six plus, we roll 2d6. I rolled a five. If less than six, that patient dies. So I said that Green Street was the one that had surgery, so he's going to die. We're going to place him over there. And this event is now done. But remember, I got to pull an event off the top and put it in the discard pile once I put that one as well. Now, you'll also know there's, a, there's another rule. I only had one of these test action cards, so I have to draw another one until I... Okay, so I got another one where we... Uh, don't have an event. All right, good. I'm going to be able to show you guys a sled, and that's going to go and try to get us more resources, which is very, very good. Um, it can be hard. All right, so one success required may roll extra dice for each dog counter, but each extra die increases successes needed by one. Flip a dog team leader in the active group to convert one failure for each remaining failure flip or remove one dog counter. So Wild Green Street, Green Street just died. So we do have Crean who can help us, which is, that's, that's good. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do a dog sled. And we're, what we're trying to do is get up to the endurance, which is caught out in the, out in the ice. And we're going to try to get more successes than there so that we can bring more supplies back, right? We, we got to have some more supplies. So, may roll X, so we're going to roll one for each member of the crew that has a dice symbol. So, we're only rolling three, which that kind of sucks. 
I can also roll more for, I'm going to roll two for dogs because we need at least one success, but I'm hoping to get a couple. That way we can bring stuff back or refresh guys. I'm going to actually roll, well, shoot. So if I roll two extra dogs, that means I've got to have three successes. Well, this is going to be a crap shoot. Actually, I did pretty well. Yeah, not great. So our number required is a four or higher because of Crean. So we do have three successes with no failures. That's a good thing. One success was required plus one success for each of the dogs. So that's three successes. That's a good thing, right? Maybe I should have rolled more dice. So I get to move a resource from a card from, from here to my camp, or I get to flip one man from red to blue. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a can over. That's important. I'm going to bring, man, tough, tough, tough decisions. I'm going to go ahead and bring the shotgun because my rifle is exhausted. And... Let me think about what I want to do. Uh, do I want to bring another can good? Or do I want to bring, I want to bring a deck of cards. I'm sorry. Yep. The deck of cards. I want to bring those over. So I have a few more uh, entertainment opportunities. The, the thing about this, the dog sled is I'm, I'm not sure it really is clear. Uh, the actions, I'm sorry. It's clear what, how, what you exhaust. And you know what? Dang it. I'm going to leave the cards on the ship. And I want to flip a guy over. So I want to flip... Uh, I want to flip Ordred Lee over because he allows me to... And that's one of the options I can get when I succeed. All right. So the dog test succeeded. We didn't fail. No failure. So I didn't flip over guys. That That's a good thing. So now we've got to do meat again. And this one's saying we have to have two. So to do this success, because we have dogs, we're going to have to use three of these. So I'm going to need to use two blubbers to cook two of those meats. And that meat does not need to be cooked for the dogs. We just have to test those for exhaustion. So uh, so we have to test a whole bunch of stuff for exhaustion, which really sucks. All right. So we, we, we succeed, right? It needs two meat, one, two. Uh, we have a third one or a third one on the back. I can feed the dogs. That doesn't need to be cooked. And then we're going to need two blubbers to cook each of those two meat. So let's go ahead and do, we're going to test for each of these meats. They need threes. Okay, succeeded. The bottom meat succeeded. And this meat is a four. All right, so this meat goes away. Now we can hunt and get that back, so don't never fear. And then this blubber and one more blubber has to be tested. So that's a three or less. So that blubber goes away. And then that blubber will go ahead, needs to be a two or less. <laughs> oh man, it's already going really bad. There was one game, man, I made every roll I felt like the first three or four turns, and then it just all went to crap, kind of like this. So we succeed that. I don't have to do any failures. So there we go. We're done with this group. We move to the next group. All right, we're going to pull our two cards. All right, no, uh, no events, which is always a welcome thing. We're, uh, we're also... All right, do we want to hunt again because we need more meat? We have plenty of meat. I got to go and get stuff there because we really need that. So let's do another dog sled, right? Because once again, these are going to go away when uh, when a certain card is drawn, which is in that deck. So I I got a I got well it doesn't go away immediately, but it will go away eventually. Ah, uh, you know what? I was supposed to the surgery kind of is the active event, uh, and that just reminds you to put it in the discard and put another one in when you get the next event. It's just kind of a pneumatic pneumatic a pneumonic thing, pneumatic geez. 
Uh, let's do the dog sledding, and then the uh, test we're going to do is the double can good, which we have. All right, dog sled. With this crew, we've got five dice, two, four, five. I'm going to take three dogs. And I'm going to I'm going to regret that. <laughs> so we are looking wild can turn uh, a success into a failure. Who else can? Hussey? No. And Clark? No. So wild can be used to to mitigate the effects of a failure. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Gosh. And once again, we're using the rifle. Actually, I'm going to use the shoddy. So I should have two, four, six. Wait. All right. Five dice for my guys. I did three dogs. That's eight. I needed two for the shoddy. So I'm, I'm going to take these out. I, I have to roll those two dice because I'm using the shotgun. And the shotgun is a four or higher. So these are not failures, but not successes. Okay, and now I get two more dice for the shotgun. Okay, got one more success. That's good. All right, no failures, no ones rolled. So I've got six successes. So this is going to be good. So I'm going to bring three resources to fill my entire thing. I'm going to bring another double can good. I'm going to bring the blood test because that's going to eventually come up, eventually. What else should I, boy, pemmican? I'm going to bring pemmican just because it's so hard. It, it is so hard, it, it exhausts us. So that, that's three of those successes. Now, I also can use three successes to flip one man from red to blue. Now, that has to be in the existing group first, but any leftover can go into other groups, if I'm remembering correctly. Nope, that's only with entertain. So here, I'm going to, I'm going to go, we're going to go ahead and flip both these guys over. That's excellent. That helps a lot, and we're, we're one step further away from, from being exhausted and dying. So here we go. We're going to put that one in the discard. Then we're going to do a test of the double can good. So I'm going to do that one. We succeed, but I have to roll a one or a two. So I roll a four. I'll just do this one. Easier to reach. So we're going to exhaust that double can good. Um, but we succeed the test. We met the requirements. All right, go to the final group here. Draw a card. And this one of these, there's only two cards left. Okay, so we got the Endurance Sinks. So let's read the Endurance Sinks. Next event, remove the Endurance card, remove all supplies. I'm going to put that in the discard before I go any further and move that one because that's something I forget all the time. Uh, next event. So the next event that comes up, the endurance will sink and be removed. Remove all supplies from that card, shuffle the patient's camp, and all discards into the deck when that happens. Oh no, we're going to do patient's camp right now. So we find patient's camp, which is card number two, and all discards into, ugh, there's a lot of nasty events in there, into the deck. So let's move that out of the way. I need to sleeve my cards. I, for some reason, have trouble picking these up. And All right, let's, let's shuffle. We're not doing terribly, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I actually feel pretty decent about this. All right, so let's put... That's our new... I'm sorry, our new draw deck. No cards in the discard. We don't touch the reserve until, until we have to. All right, so we now need to draw a second card, and it's a damn event. All right, so these are going away. I hate that when that happens, that kind of stuff. We've already shuffled all that stuff in. This goes away. I think it goes out of the game. And it says, each turn, if you draw at least one sled action, I will have to lose a dog. Worms. So hopefully we won't get a lot of sled actions because, frankly, at this point, Sled actions are not as beneficial uh, for us. They can still be a little beneficial, but um, yeah. Did I forget to uh, hold on? Nope, I did no failures. So we got to draw another card. I shuffled these, man. 
Keep four supplies, move any others to Ocean Camp. Next event, remove Ocean Camp card and all its supplies. Advance the camp marker, shuffle lifeboats, and all discords, discards into the deck. All right, lifeboats. So we have to, geez. This is not supposed to happen this way. Um, my goodness. So I only get to keep four flipping supplies. I have to put everything else on Ocean Camp. So I'm going to put a pemmican. I'm going to put one of these single. I only get to keep four. Do that one. Get rid of that single can. Not get rid of it, but put it over there. I'll put the meat to the side. That way I have a meat and a blubber and a can good. I got to have the gun. I'll put the pemmican there. Good gravy. This is like, no, I'm, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to put my blubber there just to keep the gun. Advance the camp marker is something else I have to do. Shuffle lifeboats, which is in there. So I've got to shuffle all of these discards. So let me... So we're, we're making progress, and actually that... You know, I feel like sometimes the faster it goes, the better. But when you have to lose all the access to all those supplies, it just really hurts. Um, so, yeah. All right, we put that back in our draw. We have to draw again to get a... And we do. So I'm going to go ahead... Crap. We don't have blubber, but I got to hunt. So I'm going to hunt... And then we're going to do a heat test. That's what we're going to do. So three icons um, with this final group. One, two, three, four, five. This guy has no dice symbol. Five. I'm using two for the shotgun. So that's seven dice. Let's bring this back over. I think you can still see that. Let's move that up a little bit. I feel like that's gotten... All right. So I need at least three... Oh, boy. We rolled a couple failures here and didn't get hardly any successes so we got one success uh the other were failures because the the rifles or the shotguns a four and that's always the difficulty with the shotgun so let me what can i do flip wild to convert one failure eh, would that even help nope it would still make it so i'm gonna fail this is one that I'm not going to be able to succeed. So if you look at this card, I have to exhaust number 24 and number 14. I don't think they're in the, well, 24 is in the group. So he's going to go to the infirmary and there's no place for the infirmary. I'm not really sure why I'm going to put the infirmary up here. Uh, and then the other one was 14. So Clark gets flipped over demoralized. So that was not good. And now we're going to fail. Uh, yeah, we didn't succeed. The penguins got away. We're now going to not succeed the heat test unless McNish is in the, which he is not. Dang it. So we're going to fail that. We're going to have to uh, exhaust 18 and 3. Sorry, it just takes me a while to recognize. The numbers are small. That's what I'm, that's the story I'm sticking to. So 18 gets exhausted. And what was the other one? Three as well. Oh, three was Green Street. Remember, he died of surgery. So he's out of the game. Don't have to worry about doing that. All right. So that's that group. We go back here. We're going to draw two cards. Okay, we drew those. Freaking hunting and meat. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do the phonograph because we haven't done that one yet. And then I'm going to do that test. So this is called the entertain action. This is one of my favorites. Use one of the following uh, cards, the phonograph, the book, or the deck of playing cards. Roll an extra die if the symbol used on the card is what you're using. So we're going to roll an extra die for that one. 
One, two, three, four. We're going to get five dice. That guy doesn't have a dice symbol. That's the guy we just exhausted. Five, and we're going to get one extra die for the phonograph. I can flip Hussy, Hurley, or Miss Chippy to convert one failure. Miss Chippy is probably going to have to ha help us here. 12 and 15. Let's see if those are... Flip one man from red to blue in the active. Okay. Okay. Hurley or F Hussey. Let's see. Hussey is available, which is good. And Hurley is available. And they don't have great. All right. So we're going to use the four skill level of McLeod or uh, Shackleton. So we've got six dice here. We need as many successes as we possibly can because that gives us the number. Oh, boy. That's amazing. That's the best roll ever. Um, is it worthwhile? I believe it is. I'm going to flip Miss Chippy. Sorry, kitty cat. To turn this failure into a success. And why? Because I'm now, with her sacrifice, I'm going to be able to flip another guy up here over, which is always good. You have to start with the active group first. But I have six successes, so I can flip three in the active group. Then I can go down the line and flip uh, three more. This is a huge boon here. I, I always like uh, the entertain action and the sled action. They seem to work very well for me. Um, let's flip Clark here. Let's flip this guy who offers no dice as the second. And then I'm going to bring this guy from the infirmary back out here. That seems reasonable. So that was six. Very successful entertain action. I must have ground a fantastic record and people loved what I had to say. All right. So second one, a double can. We meet the requirement. We're now going to roll and roll to two. So the can stays we succeeded at that event. Fantastic. All right, let me let me check something real quick. I got to make sure the patient's camp, I'm not doing something wrong here. No, I think I'm doing it right. You will move all but four of your supplies. The next time an event is resolved, the ocean camp card will be removed. All right, so I, I've got to try to get some of those supplies back. Hopefully, I'll pull a sled action this time and, ah, poop. All right, so this lean hunting is all hunt actions require an additional success to succeed. Okay, we already did all that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I did that a little prematurely. All right, so then these are going to go away. So I lost all those supplies. This is not good. <laughs> this is very not good. I, I did not play that well. So the, the lean hunting, and we got to put another, another uh, event in there, remember. Lean hunting, all hunt actions require an additional success to succeed. Okay, just uh, take that and stabbeth me right in the heart. That's okay. Um, uh, did I, uh, we did our two things. That was just the first card I drew. So I have to keep drawing, oh, I got another event. Holy crap. Take a hunt action with the current group. Do not gain meat or blubber. Yeah, you know what? This it's we're supposed to be on this group. We were supposed to move. Do not gain meat or blubber. If more failures than successes, the lowest numbered man dies. Otherwise, do not check meat for exhaustion until the next event. Okay, whatever. Just freaking terrible. Um, I think that's supposed to go back in. It's supposed to get harder and harder. So, all right, we did draw one of those. All right, well, because we don't have much meat. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So I got to exhaust somebody in this group. Let's go ahead and just do Rickinson. I don't believe he provides any additional good benefit. And he still has a die. So that was for the red icon. Take Oh, oh I'm supposed to do, I'm sorry. So we're doing this hunt action before we decide to do that. So I need to turn that back over. I've got to do the event. Take a hunt action with the current group. Do not gain meat or blubber. 
All right, so we, if we get more failures than successes, somebody's going to die. So we've got six dice, and we have two for the shotgun, and we need fours. Holy jeez. That's about as bad a die roll as you're going you're gonna to see. Actually, for this event, I'm not sure that that really matters. So three successes, two failures. So what does it say? If more failures than successes, the lowest numbered man in the group dies. No, that's not the case. Otherwise, do not check meat for exhaustion until the next event. So I got to remember that. Don't check meat for exhaustion. Not sure exactly why. Okay, so for this group, I got to pull these two cards. We're going to do a hunt. We're going to go ahead and do Dickinson. So we have to do this again. And this event only applies that we don't have to check meat for exhaustion. So oh, we got we to gotta test our... It, yeah, because I used the shotgun. And we're fine with the shotgun. That was a good roll. Love rolling ro low on those exhaustion checks. So we're going to go hunting again. We exhausted that guy to meet that requirement. There's six guys in the group. There's six and two for the shot gun. And we are looking for four. Wow, these are pretty good rolls. Pretty, pretty, pretty good rolls. Yep, so we have five successes, only two failures. So that's three successes. We only needed one. So it says, let me go back to this because sometimes it's, I get a meat for an icon. So we're going to go ahead and put another meat here and we're going to get one blubber. So we got very lucky there because I, we had no blubber and that could have been very, very bad for us. All right, now we're going to have to test. We have a double can good. So we succeed that test. We're going to see if we, we rolled a one. So we do not exhaust our can good. Fan frickin' tastic. Uh, group number three. All right, good. Well, not good. We want to. We want to kind of keep moving. Dang it! It's just hunting. Everything's hunting again. All right, so we're gonna do a hunt here with this one, and then we're gonna do a test of a can good because that's what we can do. So we have four dice plus two for the shoddy. with fours, needing fours. So I got four successes and one failure. That means a total of three successes, we just needed two. So I get a blubber, so we get to flip this blubber over, and then we're gonna get two meat, so one and two. So we're gaining, we're gaining food and succeeding. Uh, now we gotta test the shotgun. A three, we're under the four, awesome. All right, we have a single, we succeed this, but we have to test for exhaustion and we rolled a five. The cat cannot save us anymore. Uh, we, we turn that over. All right, next group. You guys get what's going on here? I, th I think you get it, right? Okay, we're gonna do another entertain action, then we're gonna test that can good again and we may end up start now remember, you can substitute items for canned goods. So we, we've got, oh, you know what? I don't have to check meat for exhaustion. So I might substitute meat for this canned good. We'll, we'll see. We're gonna do the playing card. Unfortunately, we don't have it matching, so we're just gonna use what we've got. But we get two, four, five dice. See, it's getting harder and harder. Not as many dice. Actually, I think I'm doing pretty well here, luckily. So let's see, and we're our, our number we are looking for is the three because we're using the phonograph, and it does not, oh, four successes with no, that's amazing. All right, so in an entertain action, for each success, flip one man from red to blue in the active group. As successes remain, flip men outside the group. Okay, we're good, right? We can now do outside the group. So we have four. Let's flip one there. Let's flip one here because this group is starting to get thin. So that's two. We can do two more. Let's do, let's do Wordle. He goes to a five. 
That's, we can do one more and let's do Rickinson. I, man, I don't know if I've had this many. Not bad. So we succeeded. We're going to play that one. And now this one, we're going to do a food test. But we're going to substitute. Ah, you can't substitute meat for... No, you can. Two meats, you can substitute for one canned good. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to use one meat two meats to sub for a canned good. So I would exhaust these meats, but this event says you don't exhaust them. We succeed. All right, excellent. That's a good event that's helping us out a little bit. Doggone it. Ugh. I don't want to hunt anymore because we can't necessarily get a whole lot of good. But yeah, whatever. We'll do the... We don't have double can good anymore. So we'll do the three hunt here. Uh, and which group were we on? Did I mess this up again? No, here. We moved to that group. I, I, I forget to move to the groups. That, that That's not a good thing. So we have six dice plus two for the shoddy. We have eight. Our number is we're looking for are fours. Man. Okay, my dice are good tonight. That is six successes minus two failures. So I have a total of four successes. We succeed. We get a meat per. Unfortunately, we can only take one meat. And we've lost the other blubber. No, you know what? That, that's not supposed to be the case. You always get the blubber. Should have went over here. So that, that's what we got and we succeeded. Now we're going to do... So this event is still here. We do not check meat for exhaustion. You know what? We should have checked. Yeah, I got to check the shoddy. Dang it. See, now once you get that, you can't, if you lose your gun, you can't hunt. And then you're, we're going to end up getting slaughtered. All right. So we need two meat plus a third because we have animals. One, two, we have three meats. We're not going to check those for exhaustion. We do need to cook, so we need to use blubber. So we succeed in that, but we've got to test for the blubber, not for the meat. So let's do this one, three or less. Roll the six, that blubber is gone to the wilderness. This one is a two or less. So we're gonna flip this blubber over, it's now exhausted. So as you can see, everyone, we're starting to get depleted in our stores and our items, and it's going to get harder and harder and harder. All right, so we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. So we don't have a double can good, although we can sub two meat for a can good. That's what I'm, I, I want to do the phonograph. So this group, we go to Shackleton's group. Uh, we get six dice for the men there, two, four, six, and we get one for the phonograph, which matches, and we're looking for fours. My goodness, I'm rolling really well. This has not been my luck with this game so far. So five successes and only one failure, so that means we have a total of four. So once again, with Entertain, we can flip men from the active group from their uh, exhausted side to their fresh side. Then we can go down the line, so we get to flip Kerr and uh, Wholeness. So we succeed at that, that was excellent. And now we're gonna use two meat to equal another canned good. We have two canned goods to succeed. Remember this event, we don't check meat for exhaustion. So we're only going to check that can good. I need to roll a three or less. I rolled a two. Thank the maker. All right. So let's move on down the line. Another good group. All right. We have, yeah. So we get, we pulled one and we get an event. So this I think goes back in and we throw another event in there. This event is the, it's surgery again. Is that supposed to be thrown out? Maybe not. The highest numbered man in the current group requires surgery. Roll a die for each Macklin and McElroy. If both are fresh, otherwise roll one die only. So we're going to have to do this again. Macklin and McElroy. I believe they're all in the... 
McElroy is fresh. Everyone's fresh. Macklin is fresh. So we get 2d6. We need to roll six or higher, and we don't. <sighs> Highest numbered man in the current group. Oh my gosh. So that's Hudson. He dies. So now we've lost two guys. Just, just unreal. That's not good. Uh, and we pull this. So, so dog. See, the thing about sledding, sledding now is we have nowhere to go. Well, we'll do, we'll do a dog sled because. So there's five. That's some things that maybe aren't clear in the rules, and maybe I'm just stupid. We're going to do three dice, use three pups. Uh, and our number that we're looking for is a four. Cheatham still has a, he has a four. So there are three, four successes with no failures. All right, sled action. Flip a dog, team leader in the, okay. May roll extra dice, but each extra die increases successes needed. Yeah, so we got a total of four. You needed one, we added three, so we got four. That was lucky. Good die rolling, but not that great, right? For each success, either move one resource from a card to your camp. We don't have those anywhere. Flip one man from red to blue. Everybody's good. And I don't think that Miss Chippy counts. So we succeeded at that one. Now we have to do a test. We do have one single can good. We're going to roll, and we rolled a four, and now we lost our can good. So now becomes the ever more difficult task of whittling down your supplies and figuring out how you're going to, you know, keep your guys alive. So we draw two more cards for the next group. We move over here and we just keep doing this until we see a, a point where we're going to six, or progress the game. So, all right. We're going to do the phonograph, although it doesn't really help us any. And we're going to do the, the blubber, the heat test. So phonograph, we've got four guys plus one because it matches. Our number is a four. Four, uh, three. Okay, we got two, three successes with no failures. That's excellent. Okay, nobody needs flip, but we did succeed that test. The guys, the men's spirit is good. All right, so we've got a heat test. We have the heat. We're going to roll for exhaustion. That succeeds. We have to roll for the phonograph from last time, and of course it it failed. Forgot to do that. That's probably my biggest mistake with this game, is I don't do that always the right way. All righty. So we're going to go hunting. We're going to go hunting here with the next group. So we've got five guys, two, four, five. We still have our shoddy that gives us two, and our number is a four. So we need at least two successes. Uh, yeah, we got it. Uh, those were both sixes, if you saw. That was a six. That was a four, which matches the number. And then we have two failures. So we do have two successes, which is what we've got. Uh... We get one blubber and there's no meat to be had. So we flip that over and we succeeded at that. Now we have to do a cooking test. Now we have to actually try to exhaust our meat and blubber. We have two and we need one for the dogs. We have a blubber. Just, you know what? Oh. Ah, uh, you know what? I need two now for the heat test. So I do have it. Don't have to cook the dog's meat. So we succeed. See, there's just a lot of rules like this, guys. Uh, let's test for the blubber twice. We need a, a twos or less. That's amazing. Double ones. Keep that blubber from disappearing. Now we've got three meats that we have to test, needing threes or less. 
So only one of the meats gets exhausted. So good, but we passed. Wow, that was a that was a good roll. All right, let's draw. Okay, we draw an event. So we put one of these back in the deck. After attempting your chosen test, you must also attempt a heating test. So that's going to go back to the discard. Oh, All right, so now we're going to pull two more cards or keep pulling until we get two test cards. Uh, you know what? Am I supposed to be drawing three yet? Yes, I am. All right, well, I messed up. You know what? That, that's just part of life. When you when you or proceed, you have to start drawing more cards. And ultimately, you can't do the test on the actual other cards. It, it wouldn't have hurt me that bad because my guys are so stinking fresh. But that's an example of uh, a, a mistake that I made. I apologize for that. It, it's going to happen more than you realize, even when you're playing. So, progression. Beginning on the next turn, you will draw three cards. Oh, okay, it's only after the lifeboats. No, it's supposed to be after patience camp. So let, let's handle it this way. I think since patience camp went away, we've had one, two, three, four, five different tests. Let me just pick these two. We would have drawn another card. I'm just going to... I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard, or not discard. I'm going to, yeah, because that, that should have been. But remember, I got a couple of, of good tests once or twice. Can't do that guy. All right, that, that seems fair. I'm, I'm trying to make it, make it correct. Okay, so we still have, this needs to go in. So we drew lifeboats. So let's read, read lifeboats. Assign counters, men, supplies, dogs, Mrs. Chippy, to unoccupied spaces and the three lifeboats. Shuffle Voyage of the James Caird and all discards into the deck. Resolve life, lifeboats display. If any men survive, advance the camp marker and reorganize your men in the new camp. Okay. So we're going to do lifeboats. And this is where I'm not necessarily uh, as good. So... Assign counters, men, supplies, dogs to unoccupied spaces in the three lifeboats. So let's go ahead. So let's do Stevenson. And I can move these guys around, right? Don't have to have them all in the same boats, but I, I think I am going to take those guys. So we got to put our four in there. That's going to help. So we're going to the lifeboats. We're making progress. We're making, I'm going to put a couple dogs in each of these. Our dogs are in good shape. Yeah, we're going to put a dog in there. We're going to put a couple dogs in here. And then we're going to keep, there's a four there because we need some fours. And, we're gonna, and, and you got to fill up these spaces and that's like all you can take, right? You got to take your men. You can't leave men behind, but we can, I think, leave other things behind. So let's let's figure this out. I've only gotten this far one other time. I think every other time I've been terrible at this game. Men supplies dog to unoccupied spaces. Resolve lifeboats display. If any men survive, advance the camp marker. Okay. So now we're going to put our supplies in there. Let's put a blubber. Let's put this meat. Let's do a phonograph. I'm not sure we're going to be able to take all the dogs, guys. We're going to have to make a choice and leave the dogs behind, which kind of sucks. Um, but Amabel's an evil person and wants us to die and, and really struggle, so that's why she makes the game so tough. All right, so this goes away, right? All right, so we shuffle Voyage of the James Caird and all discards into the deck. So we do that. The James, Voyage of the James Caird is this one. We're going to shuffle all of this together to make a new deck. So give me a second. 
Are you guys having fun yet? Remember, that's not a word I choose to use when I'm playing this game, but it is very interesting. Uh, can you feel the despair and the difficulty and the tough choices and what's going on? It's, it's just really, really tough. All right, so we created our new deck. And then we're going to resolve lifeboats display. If men survive, advance the camp marker and reorganize men in the new camp. All right, so let's go to the rule book because I'm going to have to show you. All right, so here we are. So I didn't make a mistake on, on one of those parts. Beginning on the next turn after the lifeboats thing has come out, the patient's camp, you will draw three cards instead of two. So next time we're going to start drawing three cards. And you know what? I think it says it right here. And that's what that's why I should have been listening. After resolving the action and test for your chosen cards, you must resolve one penalty from the remaining card before discarding it. When lifeboats becomes the active event, that's the active event. You must resolve the lifeboats display. See the lifeboats chapter. We'll go there. Assuming men survive, advance the camp marker to Elephant Island. You may at this time redistribute your men into groups. Place the active group marker on the first space. Shuffle voids of the James Carrot and all discards into the deck. Then you'll draw four cards. All right, so when lifeboats, let's go to the lifeboats, right? When the lifeboats event is resolved, bring out the lifeboats display and the lifeboats deck. So we've got that. We've got the lifeboat deck right here. Transfer men, keep them on their blue and red sides. I did that. Assigning them to one of three boats. Any empty spaces in the boat may be used to hold a dog counter, Mrs. Chippy, or any other resource from the supply. I did all of that. Any counter for which you do not have room is removed from the game. You cannot voluntarily leave a man behind. So I have to get rid of the dogs. Sorry, dogs. Shuffle the lifeboats deck and into each of the three spaces deal five cards. Flip each space face up. The lifeboat sequence is resolved. Over the course of three days, each day consists of three turns, one for each lifeboat performed in this order, the James Care, the Deadly Docker, the Stancomb Will. So that's the way they're listed. On a boat's turn, uh, sorry, roll a die for each man on his fresh side. Shackleton is always considered fresh. Each lifeboat card depicts a type of die result, expended rolled dice that match that type, and remove the current card in that boat stack. You may complete multiple cards in a single turn. Any unspent dice are given to the next boat, maintaining their rolled faces, and can be used along with any dice rolled on that boat's turn. Okay, kind of interesting. So, let's go ahead and give this a good shuffle. And into each of the three provided spaces, we're going to deal five cards. And we're going to flip each stack face up. So, one, two, or one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we're going to turn those stacks face up. Sorry, this is like making the sausage, right? You guys are making, watching making the sausage happen. This is just the way I am, man. You got to deal with it. All right. So now we're going to do three days of three turns. I'm going to use this to kind of remind myself. One for each lifeboat and its crew always performed in this order. The James Caird, the Dudley Docker, the Stancomb Wills. On a boat's turn, roll a die for each man on his fresh side. Shackleton is always considered to be fresh. Each lifeboat's card depicts a type of dice result. This says two pairs. Expend rolled dice that match that type of result to complete and remove the current card in that boat's stack. You may complete multiple cards in a single turn. Okay. Any unspent dice are given to the next boat, maintaining their rolled faces, which is interesting, and can be used along with any dice rolled on that boat's turn. So, we've got... Uh, each day consists of one... On a boat's turn, roll a die for each man on his fresh blue side. One, two, three, four, only five. Man, that sucks. So we've got to get two pairs on this roll or we're not going to succeed. Okay. Okay, so I believe when, if I remember correctly, when we fail these, this ship is going to be lost at sea. My goodness. 
Oh, Shackleton is considered to be fresh, so we get an extra die for him. Thank heavens for reading that. Two, four, five, six. Okay, I see. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to roll for this card. And then we're going to go to the next day. They're not going to die. If they can't get all five of these cards done in three days, they're going to lose. Now, the key to this is not using all the die here and moving those over and then helping each other, right? So we've got six. We need two pairs. Two sets of two identical dice, each pair a different value. Ah, crack. Look how close we freaking are. So we failed, right? We weren't able to complete that. There's no penalty, but we can use all these dice on this. So it, 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 it it's going to make this a little easier. All right, we, fresh guys. Three, four, five, six. So we're going to use six dice. And we can use those results to get a sum of eight. Any number of dice, sum of pips in, is eight. So we pretty much already got that. All right, so I, I don't want to mess these up. So these are all dice that we are using. So we're going to try to use the fewest dice to get this result done. Right? So we're going to use a five and a three. That is completed. Those dice go away. So yay, they completed one. Now we're going to carry all these dice over that were not used with their faces up to this table. Three, four, five. We have six dice that we're going to roll. Uh, we may not. We need a straight. Four, five, and six. Or a, you know, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six, right? So we actually have that. We have a two. We have a three. We have a four. Oh, wait, do these get used? Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. Carried over dice only go to the next boat. So that's something. Ah, crap. So I'm going to take away those four. I think I messed some of that up. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll do that. Just chalk it up to another mistake. So we are looking for a straight. So here we got a two, three, four right? That's a straight. This gets succeeded. These go back to the, and then they get to roll three, their six dice. We didn't do that. So let's roll their six dice. Now these dice cannot be used again, but these rolled over not used dice can be used here. Does that make sense? I want to make sure I'm doing, I'm explaining that clearly because I've, I've messed this up just a little bit. Okay, so this is what we have left to use, and we need two pairs, two sets of identical numbers, and we've got that. So we've got two sixes and two, all right? Then we need a straight. We have a four, five, and a six. Four, five, and a six, so we can complete that, dot, that boat. We do not have snake eyes, so all these dice... Now we got to roll for these guys. Why do I not? Three, four, five, six. So these are dice that are going to be handed over to the next crew. And I, I'll get this straight here in a second, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. I'm really not dumb. So we're going over here to this group, right? And this is day two. We've made it through. We're now in day two. All right. The active group has these dice to draw from, and they're going to roll three four, five, six, three, six. So we're going to roll these because, you know, if you if you can complete um, more than one card, more is the better. So we just need uh, uh, two, uh, two pair. So we've got two fours, right? I'm going to throw those two fours there. We need a straight four, four dice in a numerically contiguous sequence, which I'm not sure we've got four dice. We have a three, four, we do. Three, four, five, and a six. So we've got those dice. So that completes that one. 
We now need boxcars. Well, we don't have boxcars, so that's okay. These dice go away. These dice come back. These are left over for the next group. And we're here, right? So we've got that, and we're going to roll one, two, three, four, six dice. All right, so that's what we rolled. Got to keep these separate. Really got to keep them separate. So we need a sum of eight. Here we got two, two uh, fours, so that completes that one. Then we need a triplet. We have a three of our own, plus using that three from those guys. Then we need sum of 16. 11 and 4 is 15. We do have that. So we could do a sum of 16 and complete that. Now we don't have two pair. So this two is going to be left over and carried over to here. They've got to do, they may end up not surviving, which is interesting, right? So they're going to roll six dice as well, two, four, six, and use that one, two that's left over. All right, well, got it. So here's what they've got. We don't have snake eyes, so we, we can't progress. Two ones. Boy, that, that's a tough one. All right. So they're gonna they're actually gonna sink. They're not gonna make it. So now we come over here and we've got six. Two, four, six. We're gonna roll these for these guys. Got two sixes, a four and a two. Crap. My big fat butter fingers. All right, box cars. We're gonna use one six from this, and we're gonna use a six that we just rolled. So that completes boxcars. That's going to go back here. We have to do sum of 13. 10, 13, we succeed. These are left over from the first one. We cannot use them. That gets succeeded, and these get carried over here. So here we're going to do 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to use 6. Boom. Two, well, we just need a pair, which I think we've got, so we could do a pair of sixes. So that succeeds there. All right. So because we messed up and didn't really do these right, these guys are going to end up dying. They get lost at sea. Yikes. That hurts bad to lose that many dudes. All right. Okay. I, uh, well, I'm going to show you here what happens. Okay. So we read this, see what it happens, right? If any men survive, we had some men survive, advance the camp marker and reorganize your men in the new camp. So Elephant Island is where we are at now. Uh, these are leftover lifeboat cards. So I guess Shackleton's dead too, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so we can reorganize, re reorganize these guys so I'm going to say Shackleton's dead, but that very well could not be the case. I may just be wrong. I'm going to put a six here. We're going to put a six here. We're going to put our doggos. We've got our phonograph that's exhausted and our gun. And we've got four full meats, which we won't be able to cook. So that's going to end up cooking our gooses. Let's do a five. This is a five. Man, the choices here just aren't great. They're really not. I've lost almost all my really good guys. So we're going to put a four here in Crean's group. Wild's going to be here. There. And at least they'll roll a die. At least she'll roll a die. We want at least... Well... Unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to have to be. All right. So if any men survive, advance the camp marker. So we're now to Elephant Island. We now, anytime we have a heat check, we need three blubbers. So that's going to end up sinking us, just to be completely honest. So we throw that one out. Right. Oh, the James Caird was lost. We lost. 
forgot it. If all three boats are lost at sea or if the James Carrot has lost the game in. So unfortunately, because we didn't play it right, we were stupid. We ended up losing the James Carrot and that's okay. All right. I, my purpose in playing this game is I have not seen a playthrough video on the online anywhere. I've seen some people talking about it for like five minutes, like, Oh, it's a great game. And it's very, I don't, I'm not sure that those people actually played the game or delved into it. This is now my fourth try. I've gotten to the lifeboats one time, but I think I messed it up that time as well. It's just, I need to get used to it. I will say this, using these things really helped me and I'm still not sure I did it 100%. My one knock on this game is sometimes the rules are not 100% explicitly clear. And I get it, Amabel will probably yell at me because I've never written rules and I can only imagine because I know in my mind, when I understand something, it's much more difficult to explain it to people that don't understand it. But overall, we got almost everything right. I enjoy the tests. They're very interesting. It's interesting to try to choose what actions you're going to do. The pressure luck. You know, hey, I'm going to use three dogs this time. Oh, I need four successes total, but I'm hoping I'm going to roll. Or I'm going to use my shotgun so I can get it two extra dice. But it's not as good as the rifle. Am I going to run out and try to get all those supplies from the uh, from the endurance before it sinks? Am I going to risk everything to try to get stuff from Ocean Camp back? I really enjoy those challenges. Um, the other thing that I think is very interesting about the game is the events. I just think they're very interestingly put together. They create even more difficult challenges that are really difficult to, to deal with. Now, if you look at the game... Other than losing the James Carrot, and I really think I played the dice wrong, and I think we could have survived that. I'm not doing that poorly. Now, we're going to start drawing three cards every time and having to basically take a penalty for that third card because you can't do them. So that's going to start eating up my guys and probably end up killing me um, before anything else happens. But... I think you got the idea of how the game plays. I think you can see how it works. You can see that I'm an idiot and that I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but the game's interesting. I am really going to, I'm going to die on that hill. This is a very fascinating game, well put together. And I, I do enjoy the experience of playing this. So if you're looking for a challenging, difficult, kick you in the stomach kick you while you're down type game, this is the game for you. Solo game plays in about 90 minutes, two hours if you're slow like me sometimes, and there's just fantastic choices. So go ahead, check it out. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you give it a chance. And Amabel, please comment on my video because I don't think I did a lot right. I probably made more mistakes than I even realize, but uh, I do think the game is very interesting. So Check out my video review. I'll put my comments and thoughts together. Uh, I'll try to keep it to 20 minutes. This was almost an hour and a half. But I, I will try to do a review video, so please check those out. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.